I've had so many requests to do a back testing video so here we are in FX replay and in this video I'll be taking you through a back testing session now for the model that I'm going to use I will be incorporating some of the ideas and the concepts from my last video so if you haven't seen that then make sure you click up here in the corner and you can check that video out before this one now let's go over the trading model and the trading plan that I'll be using for this back testing session first of all there's going to be some mechanical rules now the first mechanical rule is that I'll only be trading in the London and the New York kill zone the second rule is that all my positions will be taken at 1% risk the third rule is that I will not be moving any stop losses to break even I won't be taking any partials if you're wondering why it's just the decision that I've made for this trading model all of the trades that I take will have a minimum of one RR but ideally I'm going to be going for two RR or I'll be targeting some form of liquidity or imbalance the final mechanical rule will be that I will be using two time frames the first time frame that I'll be using is the daily time frame and this will be used for my daily bias and then my entry time frame which will be the 15 minute next there's going to be a few discretionary rules the first discretionary rule will be I'll be trying to identify all the flows to help me to see where price is going and also to highlight potential points of interest the second rule is that I'll be using my experience of ICT you know fair value gaps breaker blocks etc to try and get a read on price and to use those in my analysis the reason why these things are discretionary rules is because narrative and context is always going to play a role in which one of these are going to be relevant and which ones we're going to ignore so you will not be able to make this mechanical because it all depends on what's happening right now now of course the goal here isn't to become a back testing warrior okay the goal here is to put a model together back test it see if it has any potential get some data on it and then if this model actually ends up performing quite well in back testing the next stage would be to take it into forward testing on a demo account now the good thing about forward testing is you can really see how you would perform with this model in actual real live markets you can't cheat it you can't rewind it okay so it's the best way to get an accurate picture of just how well this model will play out okay do not make the mistake of going straight from back testing and then jumping straight onto a live account with a trading plan you always want to make sure that you forward test it first okay so now that everyone's clear on what the trading rules are and what I'll be doing let's now start a back testing session in FX replay okay so here we are in FX replay and the first thing that we've got to do of course is create a session so let's give ourselves an account balance I'm gonna say 100k because it makes me feel like a demo baller <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna go to euro USD because that's my main currency pair that I trade and I'm just gonna be doing it for one month right so we have to pick a start date here um, I'm gonna go back a few years because the most recent years I've already back tested and I know that data quite well so I'm gonna go back to 20, 2017 and let's hit say March January is not a very good month anyway February starts to pick up and get better um, let's just go to March and yeah let's start from the 1st of March and then we'll click on one month and that will create our session once sessions created let's click into it and it will load it up for us okay so here we are um, now for this back testing session there's two indicators that I use um, when I'm back testing FX replay the first one is a session indicator and that's just going to show me the London kill zone and the New York kill zone and then the other one is um, basically what it does is it shows me the opening price at midnight New York okay so both of those are toggled on and um, yeah let's just let's just jump straight into it so just like I would do on the real markets okay the first thing that I'm gonna do is check the daily time frame and try to work out where we are in price so straight away okay I can see that price is in a downtrend okay it's shown a retracement with all the flow 
and we're kind of just hanging around in the middle here so it looks like the main parent swing is going to be from this high all the way down to this low and this is a retracement within that okay so if we look at where has price most recently come from you can see here that after this last drop right this drop took sell side liquidity here and then we had one drop we had a second drop price come up and then we had a third drop right into liquidity now if you're in my discord and you go to my live sessions you know i talk about this a lot when you see three stabs into liquidity you know price is going to go the other way very aggressively right and if you're not part of my community then check out the link in the description below you can join using that link okay so once we've come from sell side liquidity my eyes automatically go to buy side liquidity right so you've got a high here which we can obviously see has been taken okay so we've come from sell side price has come up to buy side however because this is the parent price swing so this high started off this entire move what i would normally do is i would draw a fib from the high to the low and mark out 50 percent okay because what that is now doing is i'm now splitting this entire range into premium and into discount okay so if price has come from sell side and it's going to retrace it's going to retrace into some form of a premium okay so what i do is i look at equilibrium and then i find the first swing high which is the first buy side liquidity target that is within premium so it's very easy that's going to be here so what I'll do is I will mark out this on the chart right and basically this is now going to act as my draw on liquidity on the daily time frame unless price breaks down and um, yeah I would say maybe if it comes down below this low here then I would suspect that we're going lower okay so I don't want to see it break down below this low but as long as price stays above this then this will be my draw on liquidity so currently at the moment my current daily bias you would say is bullish now that I've set the framework for the daily time frame right let me get rid of this on the chart where are we right now so obviously we took a a high here okay and price is now retracing back into this price swing right so we've dropped down, we've taken swing low here, a swing low here, we've dropped down a second time. I guess what I'm looking for is, are we gonna get a third drop down like here? Or are we gonna get a fouled swing and see if we can get above these highs, right? If we can get above these highs, then that gives me confidence that price is gonna go to this high here, this high, and ultimately this high, okay? so. Let's drop down into a 15 minute. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the following London session. This is normally where I'd start in the morning when I come to my charts. It's the beginning of the London session. So yeah, as you can see, price has come up, taken some form of buy side, and now it's retracing, right? So I'm gonna be looking at this low to see if price wants to go from buy side down to sell side okay so okay so price has taken sell side liquidity here um, and this first shaded area is the London kill zone there's going to be another shaded area drawn that's going to be the New York kill zone so now I'm going to be waiting to see if price wants to um, go higher oh yeah there's one thing that I forgot actually if I turn on this template and split it, what I'm gonna have on this side of the screen is I'm gonna have the daily time frame. So I can monitor what the daily is doing alongside what the intraday time frame is doing. So as you can see, we've taken this daily low. So now I'm gonna be watching to see if does price wanna show willingness to go higher. Okay, so this is now the end of the New York kill zone. As you can see, end of the New York kill zone. 
so I wouldn't be taking any trades. So if this was in, um, if this was actually in live markets, I would just come back the next day. So I'm going to skip forward to the next London session. Let's see what the London session brings. Also, one thing that you can see actually is we have signs of order flow in play, bullish order flow here. So you've got these two down candles, we break above, right? And what these two become is a bullish order block. Okay, what these two become is a bullish order block. And then we break higher, come down, break higher. We don't retrace down into here. We create another down candle and then price comes up higher and once that happens this candle here becomes the new order block okay so now we're in london right and price has come down we've yes we've spiked down into this candle here but we close within this order block right so we're still respecting bullish order flow um actually this might be a setup because price has spiked down we've taken liquidity and we're respecting order flow so i think this high could be a target this high could be a target and this high could potentially be a target okay so right let's take a long position and what i'm going to do is i'm not going to smother the trade so I'm not going to put it right at the wick I'm going to give it a little bit more room okay give it a little bit more room in case it wants to come down but we're respecting bullish order flow okay London session spike down taking sell side liquidity if this is going to continue higher to this high and beyond then this will be a good chance to do it so I'm going to set this and I'm going to set it just to this high here Okay, now what that's going to enable me to do is if you see on the daily time frame, right, it's not confirmed that we're actually going to go higher yet. So I don't want to target the daily highs like up here because I'm not actually sure at this time if it is going to continue that high, right? The daily is still, I'm still uncertain. So therefore, I'm only going to go to this high. Now, what that means is that I could potentially be wrong on the direction, price can come up here foul and go down and I could still potentially um, you know have a successful trade okay so I'm only going to go for a one to two and I'm targeting this high here so let's place the order first trade successful so price came down into this order block respected it and then there's another one here and price has come up right so if we want to see bullish order flow intact we want to see this candle here um, remain respected okay <laughs> all right so price just flew away and never gave us a chance and we've actually taken this okay so yeah price has come up pretty high so at this point I will just skip to the next London session oh okay so turns out price came down in the fair value gap it came up it's taken the highs and it's also broken these highs so for me I don't need to see a close to know that we're bullish right um, now that it's wicked above those highs that has confirmed to me that we are in fact bullish so let's see what happens i wouldn't buy from up here because if you look at all this price action it's quite extended so i'll be looking for some type of, of pullback okay okay this is interesting right so what i'm currently thinking right price in the london session let me get rid of this so price in the london session 
has aggressively moved up okay and it's taken buy side liquidity now it's aggressively displaced lower we've broken structure here okay so yes i am bullish but what this looks like to me is it looks like price is now going to start a retracement phase okay so if we now think in terms of order flow what can we see right so obviously you've got some bearish sorry some bullish order blocks here we break up we gap we don't come back down into it we go down we come up we come down into it here we come up we we need to come down into this area okay we need to come down into this area and to see price continue higher okay so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to draw a fib from this range equilibrium and just under equilibrium because we've come from um, because we've come from buy side right my eyes are going to go to some form of sell side so I look at equilibrium and then I look at the first swing low here so if price can stab below this low potentially into this into this um, fair value gap then that would be a good opportunity to go long it might not happen on this day it might happen the following day but that's kind of what I'm going to be um, anticipating let's go forward all right it's the New York session and again we're seeing signs of order flow but bearish so I can take a temporary sell and target this this low here right so we've got an up candle we break down you can see it respected here and here and now we're at the start of the, of the New York session right so what I would like to see is if price can come up back to the pri back to the opening price at midnight New York into this fair value gap just above this order block here if we can wick up into that that would provide a great opportunity to go short the other thing that I can see in this scenario is a breaker right we've got a high a low a higher high and then we break down this down candle here if you draw that out in time that's a breaker right so actually what I'm going to do I'm going to place a trade just there stop loss above this fair value gap and I will target this low do a one to two again okay so we wicked in in the New York session okay so New York session quite often can be a retracement of what happened in London let's see what happens so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip forward into the next London session and hope that my stop hasn't been taken <laughs> Also, if you bring your eyes back over here, right, you can see that we are just retracing, okay? And what's interesting is now we've created this fair value gap here, and so we could retrace down into this candle's high, right? So we do still have some downside potential before we go up. So let's see what happens. Perfect right so as you can see here right we've got order flow once again and price has now wicked down into here so what I'm gonna be doing is if this was me in a real-life scenario I would just wait for the next morning so here we are the next morning price is still dropping so I'm not interested in this at the moment um, yes all the flow is temporary bearish but I'm kind of waiting for um, price to continue higher so let's continue okay so price has come down right We've taken the first time we took the low here and then we come down a second time and price has dis has displaced higher so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set 
a long position at this order block and I'm going to target um, these relative equal highs up here okay so that's another one to two so remember what I said about bullish order flow right we've got a down candle it comes up we create another down candle and then we break up above remember what I said about taking trades from here if we have a fair value gap um, sorry you can't see because of this let me take this off All right when you have a fair value gap under a order block you have to allow price to come down into it into the fair value gap okay so my order looks good if we can get a retracement in New York that will be good to go long Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, okay okay so price you see how you see how price respected this down candle in terms of the close but we wicked down into just into this fair value gap do you see that so again this is bullish order flow and it just missed my entry so let's take that off okay okay let's go to the next day and then we can reanalyze so if we go to the next day right you can clearly see that price is now after this retracement into this fair value gap we're now heading up right just to remind you on the daily this is the daily time frame we've broken this high here okay so I'm now expecting higher prices right so I'm going to be bullish now this is the beginning of the London session and I'm looking for signs of bullish order flow once again so straight away I can see that of course price has come up we've come down these two down candles we've come up draw this out in time price respects it here we come up price has broken down into these two candles right so you had this order block we come up then you had these two candles we came up now beginning of the London session and we're here so we do have a fair value gap so I'm going to place an order underneath this low at this low stop loss is going to be under here and I'm going to target yesterday's high that trade has already taken place and I wasn't able to get in um, however if price comes down into these candles now right actually no because we're coming from liquidity here I don't want to take it if price comes back into this because price can come from buy side into sell side I wouldn't take this because we're coming from buy side liquidity right so there's a high chance that we might spike into this low before continuing okay so on this occasion it just looks like it would have been the perfect trade but uh, <laughs> it is what it is okay it's just a trade I, I missed so let's just move on to the next day As you can see from this daily time frame, right, we've made a new high, taking this high, and then price is now starting to retrace. So once again, we've got this fair value gap that we can retrace into, and price has also come down into this order block. So on the daily time frame, you've got down candles, we push up, right, create an order block, we come down, push up, create an order block, we've come back down into it, and now we're pushing up. Right, it looks like the night before we also we swept we swept a low here, right? And then I'm starting to see signs of order flow going higher the very next day. Okay, so now it's the beginning of London session, so let's see what we get.
Okay, so this is a similar situation to a trade that we took before. Okay, so I'm bullish, bullish order flow. In London, we came straight up. You see how we have the opening price at midnight in New York. We've come back down to it and we've wicked. We've wicked through these lows here, right? So as ICT likes to mention, the wicks do the damage, the bodies tell the story. So the body tells me it's respected all the flow, but the wick has done the damage. So this is a sign for me to go long. And once again, I'm not gonna smother the trade. I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra room just in case we wick this low again. And I'm gonna be aiming for um, this high here, okay? I could aim for this high, but I'm gonna aim for this high here. The reason why I'm picking this high is because this, this high is this whole swing, right? So if we are truly bullish, we've got to get past this high first. So let me do it just before, just <laughs> let me do it between to be safe, All right? Let, let's do a one to three, let's do a one to three. Okay, let's place. Okay, so that trade ended up playing out as well. Um, so that's pretty good. Don't think I've lost so far yet, which, oh, <laughs> wow, okay. Um, yeah, so must have been news or something, but that, that movement is, is huge, okay? So yeah, let's fast forward, let's go to the next day. So now on the daily time frame, the current drawn liquidity is going to be this high, right? This high here. So price has moved very aggressively. Originally on this day, I was expecting a deep retracement, didn't happen. So now we have to see what's going to happen from here. We have again, signs of bullish order flow, down candle with a fair value gap underneath into these down candles. If price can get down here, then that's what I'll be looking for to go long. Oh, okay. So it's at the beginning of the New York session and price has, has come down aggressively into this area here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a long position Um, I'm going to put it just under this current wick and stop loss it's going to go under here and then once again I'm going to be targeting these highs right like that so let's place the order okay another trade cool another trade um, again the drawn liquidity is this high here so we could have a small retracement lower and then continue so we'll keep looking for buys Okay, so for the New York session, right, we can see that London dropped down into this fair value gap beneath this order block, okay, and then we've had a nice reaction displaced to the upside above this high. So I would be willing to go long if price comes back down into it, and I'll be targeting the highs. Okay, another successful trade, and we're very almost next to this high here. Okay, so I would probably just wait to see what happens and skip to the next day.
Okay, so on this day, I'm looking to see if, because we didn't get a reaction that I wanted from here, because I was looking for New York to come up and then I'll trade a continuation into this high, but because we didn't get it and we come lower, I think we're coming for this low here, right? And into these down candles, this fair value gap in here. So I wanna see this low get taken and then I'll be interested to go long. Right, that never happened. Instead, we displaced higher. So in this case, I'm not sure, I don't know. I don't know if I like this one. Um, if price comes down into here, would I take it? Yeah, okay, yeah, I would. So if price comes down below this candle here into this fair value gap, then I'll be willing to go long. Ooh. Okay, so price aggressively gapped up. So I just don't, already I don't like this day. If I was to see this in real life, I probably would skip the entire day because this gap here, I think, I don't know. I'm just gonna skip this day because I don't like it. <laughs> okay, cool. So as you can see, we had bullish order flow right into liquidity. Now that we've taken liquidity and we have this here, that sets the stage for a potential bearish run, right? So I'm gonna delete this. And now I'm gonna look for reasons to go short. Normally I wouldn't pick a top like this. I would probably wait for more confirmation, but because there's a gap down here and we've taken um, buy side, I would be willing, if we can get above this high here, right? So some form of buy side liquidity, that would form um, potentially a setup to go short. Okay, if you're following all the flow, we've got you had some two up candles here, breaks down, come up into these candles, we break down, we come up a little bit, we come down, but we've got a fair value gap in here with a another bearish order block right underneath you know these two candles here what I'm looking at. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll create entry will be here if we get it stop above the high and I'm gonna target um, I'm gonna target again a one to two because I could be wrong right I could be wrong um, we might just retrace and continue so I'm not gonna target this gap I'm just gonna target another one to two so now we're outside of the New York kill zone so I'm just gonna cancel my order because we didn't get it and go to the next day. Okay, so that's the end of the simulation and this back testing session. Um, I didn't get a trade to finish off because price just kept coming down didn't give me no real entries, okay? So let's now take a look at the statistics. <laughs> you know what, yeah, I swear guys, yeah, this video looks rigged, like 100% win rate. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be the first one to tell you that this is not, this is not a typical month. Um, and no, I actually didn't rig this video either. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, a month isn't long enough to really see if something is profitable or not. So I wouldn't read into this too much. Um, I don't get 100% in real life. So these stats look really, really good, but I don't wanna try to sell you the idea that this is like what I do because this is not what I do. <laughs> it's just kind of funny because it's happened for the video. But if we look at our statistics, right, we've made 11% this month. Um, we took five trades one five trades. My average RR was 2.2. My max RR was nearly three. My ideal average RR was 2.45. So it seemed like I was maximizing most of the potentials, right? So my ideal RR was very close to my average RR. So I was picking good exits, which were basically liquidity. So they are good exits. And my max ideal RR is nearly three. Okay, so there's not really much, you know, there's not really much room for me to squeeze out more profit. Um, I think 
looking by these statistics, my exits are pretty good. So here we can see the average duration of my trades, bearing in mind I'm on a 15 minute chart. So my average duration is just over a day. If I'm getting into a trade, there's no point me really looking, even looking at the trade on the same day. If I get in a trade today and today is Monday, I might as well turn the charts off and come back on Tuesday because my average trades are a day, just over a day, right? So these statistics can kind of help you with what, what should you be expecting. So of course, my average win streak is five because I was on a win streak in this video. So I'd be curious to actually test this further to see what my loss streak would be and, and what my actual statistics are. So you can see that like between this trade here and this trade here, there was almost two weeks. So, and I find this is actually realistic in real life as well. I don't always take trades every week. Um, sometimes I do get two, three trades in a week, but there are times where I don't trade for maybe one or two weeks, right? So that's what we're kind of seeing here. This is pretty normal for me. So again, in real time, you need to have that patience to wait up to two weeks for a setup, right? So that's quite a long time. Yeah, you can see 11% for March. It seemed like I only traded on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Again, it's only five trades, so you can't really look into that too much. What I would do from this stage is I would now back test maybe for another two or three months, see the statistics, and then if they still look really good, I would take this model into forward testing, and I would do at least a month of forward testing. Ideally, you wanna do three months of forward testing, um, but do at least a month, see how it goes, and if it looks similar to the back testing results, then I might go ahead and think about taking it into a small live account. But guys, that's all I've got for you in this video. Hopefully you liked this one. If you did, show me your appreciation by putting a like. And if you stayed until the end, I know it's a long video, but trust me, I appreciate you. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to not miss the next one. And guys, I will speak with you all soon.